All right. So, welcome everyone again. Welcome to I Go Church International Gospel Hour tonight. It is our from New Age to Jesus again sessions. Here it is today. It is January the 23rd, 2022. Let us begin with a prayer. Father God, we thank you so much. We praise you, we worship you, and we honor you. We give you the glory, we give you the praise, because Lord, we know who you are. We know that you're powerful, you're the almighty. You are everything, Lord God, and we just ask, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit to come strong over each and every one of us. Lord, give us revelation, give us understanding, Lord God. Give us a new way of seeing you, Lord God, a new understanding, Lord God, of embracing everything that has to do with you, with your word, Lord God, with everything. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we come to you and we praise you. And we just ask, Lord God, that you may open, Lord God, the eyes of our hearts, Lord God, that we may see the things that you want us to see. Give us discernment and give us, Lord God, um, um, you know, the understanding, Lord God, of the times and the seasons that we find ourselves in. Because, Lord, we know there's a lot of things a lot of deception, a lot of witch trip, a lot of rebellion, Lord God, a lot of things going on, Lord God, that have infiltrated, you know, the church, have infiltrated many things, but yet, Lord God, you've given us discernment to see, Lord God, what is actually happening. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. Again, welcome to this beautiful night, wherever you may be. I know some of you guys are from half away across the world. And uh, we're so happy to have every single one of you. You see uh, Rohini saying, please pray for my daughter, Charisma, who's been delivered uh, from transgender confusion intervention from the Holy Spirit. We'll pray for that, uh, Rohini. God bless you. Again. All right. So God bless you all. Let us begin. And today we're going to be talking again about the difference between the third eye and the Holy Spirit. And this is something very, very interesting. And uh, I want you to... Uh, just you know, share, I want to share this dream before I begin this this um, this topic because I do believe it's a very interesting topic, and it will give you discernment. It will help you understand, you know, how the devil operates and the difference between truly a man of God and simply a false prophet or someone that pretends to be either a, a Christian or a prophet of some sort. But unfortunately, you know what? Most Christians do not understand, do not have this knowledge. And when I say that this knowledge is because they do not take the time to read or because maybe they have never been taught. As simple as that. You know, we all need to be taught. That's where the Lord established, you know, teachers uh, in the church. That's why he's established, you know, prophets, you know, apostles, evangelists, pastors, so that together they can equip the saints for the work of the ministry. But yes, the devil will always, always try to infiltrate himself and to intervene in what he is doing. Amen. So I want to share with this dream, you know, in this dream, I remember that I went to this school and in the school, I began to ask people, hey, how many would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And for some reason in this school, no one would come up and say, hey, I want, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. And I kept asking, you know, one person, another person, I would see groups of people, you know, gathered together and talking among themselves. And I begin to ask them, how many would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And no one, no one would do anything. No one would actually say, I want it. No one would seem interested in what I had to say. And for some reason, you know, again, one kid turned around and said to me, the reason why people don't want to receive the Holy Spirit is because we have the third eye open. And when I, when I received that, when I heard that in my dream, I began to understand more the times and the seasons that we find ourselves in. And I began to question a lot of things. And I realized that a lot of people, they look to Christianity for answers, for breakthroughs. They look for genuine power of God. And unfortunately, sometimes... Christians, you know, are not able to manifest the power of God. In other words, they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. So therefore, you know, the prayers sometimes are not efficient. Sometimes, you know, we're not able to move in the supernatural power of God. And because of that, people go where the power is. Unfortunately, you know, through the third eye, unfortunately, through all the people that are out there seeking power, that have been deceived in some ways by obtaining power that comes from the devil himself, you know, they have been able or they are the ones deceiving people or they're the ones able, excuse me, to manifest 
some sort of evidence of a power, you know, and when you go to, you know, psychics or maybe healers or, you know what, uh, shamans or whatever, they're able to heal many people. They're able to do their spells or cat, you know, to cast out their, their things over people. And there's actually immediate in most cases, you know, evidence of healing that takes place. There's evidence of uh, maybe, maybe a breakthrough in some ways, or there's evidence of, you know, what, um, being able to manipulate or control a circumstance. And unfortunately for a lot of people don't realize is that when we go to shaman, diviners, sorcerers, witches, and you name it, you know, we are opening a door. And we talked about this previously, but that door is open. But the reason why a lot of people are drawn to this, they're drawn to the supernatural is because they're looking at it for power themselves or they're being enticed, actually, you know, out of need to find an answer to their problems, not realizing that, you know, God is actually wanting us to go to him. And unfortunately, I can tell you, much of the church over many years, and I'm talking the body of Christ in general, has been closed to the idea in some ways of allowing the Holy Spirit to operate in a dimension where he begins to manifest his power through God's people. And I believe that every believer must be filled and must be looking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not because we are in search of the power, no, but because we're in search of him and we want him to use us. And when we want God to use us, he begins to show us, you know, how he can use us to do what? To to help us be a witness so that people can see the true manifestation of the power of God in our lives, in the church, and be convinced that truly God is present among us. Because you know what? Sometimes, unfortunately, I'll, I'll tell the truth. We talk, we talk, we talk, but yet there's no evidence of that power. There's no evidence of what we're saying. And we need to ask the Holy Spirit to manifest among yourselves. We need to seek constantly to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But even more, we need to be able to put into practice and to allow the Holy Spirit to use us so that His power can be manifested in our midst. In other words, many Christians have been just simply satisfied with knowing that they're saved. And once they know they're saved, and once they believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, they stop that search. They're not interested in truly becoming disciples of Jesus Christ. They're not interested in really in doing the things that the disciples were able to do. They thought that, you know, they think many things that that was for that time and that does not happen anymore. In other words, the prophecy was for that time. It doesn't happen anymore. That the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is what he uses to manifest his power, it is no longer relevant. They stopped to, to exist and that that is no longer relevant for today's church. That is nonsense because the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow and we know very clearly that the bible tells us that the holy spirit will come upon those those that believe and that we need to ask just like you know the disciples were waiting for the day on the, on the day of the pentecost for the holy spirit the promise of the father to come over them to empower them so that they could be a witness to god and to go into all the nations and to testify of what he had done and who he is, and the signs and the wonders will simply follow them, right? So this is something that we have to look at and understand that we as Christians, sometimes we even need to repent of this. Why? Because we become complacent. We simply become maybe, um, we allow unbelief to come into our hearts. And yet, because we feel that sometimes God does not come through for us, we kind of begin to deviate into the other side to the dark side if you want to call it we begin to deviate into the realm of the supernatural that is in this case controlled by the devil and that's when the sorcerers the witches the shamans and you know the list come into play deceiving people and even in the church like i said to you having witches inside churches pretending to be Christians, but by their actions, by their fruits, we will know them. So this is something actually Taylor was actually uh, asking me uh, the other day, and I wanna, I thought this would be a great topic for us to talk about. And that is, again, the difference between the third eye and the Holy Spirit. So having said that, you know what? There, there are instances or, or a lot of evidence of false prophets, false teachers that move and operate under this, I guess, false Holy Spirit, the, the move under, you know, I guess a, a, a false, uh, I guess, um, uh, image, if you want to call it, but the fruit itself, you know, exposes them 
and allows us to discern whether or not they're really men or women of God or simply they're just simply being used as wolves, again, dressed as sheep to deviate or to take many people away from God. Okay, so I want to start off by again going to the story of Paul as he goes in the book of Acts. And I want to read this to you guys. Okay, so let me just pull out my Bible over here and we're going to read um on um, Acts, this is Acts 16, verse 16 as well. Let me just share my screen with you guys. All right, let me just uh, put it over here. All right. Okay, so so what does it say here? Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that all of us have come to a point to understand that, yes, there are false prophets, there are people that move and operate in the gift of divination, as we talked about before. And we have to know the difference, okay? So number 16 says like this. Now it happened as, as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination, you know, met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. Again, this is Paul and Silas coming into this town and yet this girl out of nowhere began to prophesy and to say why or who these men were. Okay, 17 says, the girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. So I want you to understand the first thing is that yes, you know, this woman or this spirit again, as you know, uh, was a spirit of divination. And this spirit would actually be the one to give the information to this girl that for many years, again, she had been used to make a lot of money, especially doing fortune telling to her masters, right? So what she is saying is actually true. She says, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. So there's nothing wrong in that. You would think, why would Paul prevent this woman from actually saying the truth you know i mean this is true i mean they that's where they had come they're servants of god they're here to proclaim the way of salvation but yet the intent or the spirit behind the girl was a spirit of divination that was there to do what to mock or in some ways you know uh <laughs> to get these men upset and paul again look at what it says paul greatly annoyed again because it was day and night that she was saying she turned and said to the spirit so he turned and said to the spirit i command you in the name of jesus christ to come out of her and it came out that very hour but when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone they seized paul and silas and dragged him into the marketplace to the authorities and they brought them to the magistrates and said these men being jews exceedingly troubled our city and they teach customs which are not lawful for us being romans to receive um, or observe then the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten by rods and when they had laid many stripes on them they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Okay, so this is very interesting. So as we look at this, we see several things. One is, yes, we see that in this case, it is a spirit of divination. In some cases, we can, you know, people call it the spirit of python. You know, it's associated with a snake. And this is why it's very important that anyone that has participated in yoga understands this, or maybe Kundalini. I was talking the other day with um, with someone, and uh, we're talking specifically how, again, there's a spirit called the ancient serpent that is the one that begins to move through the spine and begin to move up in the spine until it's able to reach the head and eventually opens the third eye. Usually anyone that gets deeply involved in yoga or begins to practice yoga or begins to look, you know, look for a way to activate the chakras in them, they begin to uh, allow this ancient spirit or this dim demon, you know, uh, to move up their spine and as it moves, begins to activate the chakras until eventually the third eye is open. Now, what is the third eye? The third eye is really 
a way which the enemy, the devil, uses to give us information that in no other way could be revealed to us. In other words, it becomes a what? A gift of divination. Okay, and I want you to understand that. Because if you're trying to understand something, if you are asking for revelation, if you're asking to see in the spiritual realm, the only one that can show you this is either the Holy Spirit or the devil. And when the devil shows you this information, will not show you what God wants you to see. He will show you what he wants you to see. In other words, he will only show you part of it, or he will only show you a deception, or he will allow you to see or to know information that it may be true or is actually true, but yet it produces no change, no transformation, or no anything on anybody. Okay, And this is what witches use. This is what sorcerers use. This is what shamans use. Uh, as you know, many people understand this. The plameal gland, as, as you've been hearing maybe through a lot of uh, maybe these, uh, I guess, freedom movements that is, is being pushed out there that some people again claim to be that, you know, as we get older, some of the things that we eat and some of the things that we do end up, you know, calcifying the plameal gland and therefore we're no longer able to connect with the third eye and see beyond. Let me tell you, that is nonsense. Don't believe that stuff because why? Because the devil wants you to tap into this third eye and he wants you to give into it so that you would ask for it to be open. In other words, you're trying to seek information that is hidden information that is occult in other words you begin to dive into the occult in a very subtle way before realizing this and now the devil begins to want to reveal things about people about you know the future or again about things to come that may not necessarily be true because again only god knows the future so what happens is that as the snake moves up eventually the third eye gets open and that's usually what happens. People that have partaken in yoga a lot or they got really into it or kundalini or these type of things, you know what? The third eye gets opened and then they become very sensitive in the spirit. So what happens is that eventually it, it seems that they're able to prophesy in some way or another, but yet they're not prophets. And what happens a lot of times is that many of these uh, people that have come from that type of background because of the rebellious nature you know, in their heart or the rebellious nature of that type of sin, you know what? Eventually, sometimes they come into the church not experiencing the transformation and the gift of divination still operates because they either never went through deliverance or because simply their rebellious nature or rebellious hearts always, always questions the authority, do not want to submit to God, and they still keep doing the things. And what happens is this. This is the typical type of thing that happens. Sometimes these women or men, because it could be both, they try to operate in a very independent way. And what we will see sometimes happens is that they begin to do sometimes uh, prayer meetings, you know, out of, out of the understanding or knowledge of the pastor sometimes. And they begin to invite people, hey, come on over to pray to my house. Come on over to pray for, for my house. And again, there's nothing in come going over to pray for someone or praying in someone's house. There's nothing wrong with that. But what happens is that they begin to lead the meeting. And before you know it, they prophesy to everybody. Again, there's nothing wrong in doing that. But what happens is that they begin to prophesy things in such a way that they begin to tell people what to do in order for them to receive a breakthrough. For example, I remember we prayed for one time, uh, again, for a group of people that had been affected by one of these, uh, I guess I call them Christian witches, that she would begin to tell people, hey, listen, you know what? God is showing me that, uh, that you've lost uh, some money. And, you know, God is telling me that you need to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, put some um, uh, lemon under your bed. And then you have a dream, and then eventually that dream will tell you where that money is, you know. And they will begin to do these type of things. Or they will tell you, you know what, uh, the key to this is under the, the bed. And, you know, when you do this, make sure that you make this prayer, and then you'll find exactly what you're looking for. Or, you know what, in order for you to be healed, you need to put this on you, on your forehead, on your, on your, on your back, and this and that. And they will begin to tell people what to do as if it was some sort of type of sorcery. And there was no one there to judge, no one there to, to, to see whether or not, you know, uh, this woman was operating under, under authority. In other words, was she out in the open doing it or was she doing it, you know, behind the, the, the pastors or the leaders' backs, right? So this is why it's important for us to understand the difference. And unfortunately today, you know what, we have a lot of people 
through all the indoctrination that has been happening through, I will tell you, you know, from, from Disney, really, uh, that we're seeing generations being pushed into, again, witchcraft, into the occult. And now exactly, you know what, we're seeing even through the generation that, that grew up with Harry Potter, you know, reading those books in schools because they, they made them part of the curriculums. All of these things have indoctrinated a generation to be open and inclined to the occult, to the supernatural, to witchcraft. And that's why you're seeing that all the cartoons today, the movies today, they all have some sort of, a, I guess, transhuman or people that are able to manifest powers or manifest in some ways, um, how would I say this, uh, I guess, magical powers or they use witchcraft for good. But at the end of the day, it's still witchcraft. It's still a sin. It's still an abomination to God. So going back to my, my, my point here is that a lot of people still operate under this gift of divination because the third eye has been opened. This is how the spirit comes in. And I want you to see this and understand this is very, very important. And that's why we always ask people to renounce to the third eye because that is simply a way in which the devil comes in and begins to manipulate, begins to infiltrate, begins to control, and begins to lead this person away from God rather than to God okay so I want to read a few passages here for you to kind of uh, to know this so that is why you know the Bible talks about having a prophetic protocol in other words having things in place that will help us you know filter out when these false prophets or false Christians or again wolves dressed as sheep come into the church to uh, deviate or to infiltrate or to take people out of the church by allowing, in this case, um, how would I say this, uh, witchcraft or, or, or the false prophets uh, to come in to take people out by giving them the wrong prophecies, okay? So I want to just read uh, here, and again, you all know this. This is, this, is, this is why we have the protocols. One is to expose false Prophets. Okay, and I want you to understand that the reason why we have protocols in place, in other words, God left us things that we must know so that we are not going to be deceived. And the first thing that we must look at when we actually are seeing someone that pretends or claims to be a prophet, it says, you know what, that we must know them by their fruits. Again, okay, Matthew 7, 15 to 16 says, Be aware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are revenuous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. It says, Do men gather grapes from uh, thorn bushes or figs from uh, thistles? And anyway, you can read this. So, by their fruits. So, look at what's happened in your lives. When someone claims to be a prophet, when someone claims to be a Christian, when someone claims to be some sort of a spiritual leader, look at what's going on in their life. Don't look at how much money they have. Don't look at what car, or kind of car they drive. Don't look at what, how big their house. No, look at their lives. How is their marriage? How are their children? How is their personal life? You know, how do they manage their finances? Believe me, all these things will give you insight in what's happening in their lives. You're going to see that someone that has bad fruit, that's always in quarrels, always fighting, you know, full of greed, you know, maybe envy, jealousy, and so forth, claiming to be a Christian, you can see that the fruit of the flesh is evidently manifesting in life. So therefore, they're not really prophets of God. And I say this because a true prophet of God will actually, you know, have their life submitted to the Lord, and the Lord is the one leading through the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important for you and for me and for all of us. In other words, the first part of that protocol is look at their fruit. Look at what they're doing, okay? Let me just uh, put it on the scripture here for you guys, okay? So we have to be aware of the false prophets. So God already is telling us, even in the Old Testament, there were, there were false prophets, there were diviners, even prophets, again, that would prophesy out of their own intentions or delusions or their own feelings rather than doing or saying what God wanted them to do, right? So the false, the false prophets can also, um, you know, manifest and will manifest false signs, okay? False signs and false evidence of the supernatural. 
Now, what does, what does that mean? That means that, yes, they will be able to do miracles. They will be able to heal people. Matthew 24, 24 says, For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elects. And this is why we need to look at what's happened today. Because the whole system, the whole thing that is happening right now around the world is setting us up before the, I guess, the appearance of, of the Antichrist. You know, we're seeing the, the, the beast system being introduced with all the stuff that is happening, all the rebellion, all the witchcraft that is taking place. We're seeing that a lot of things are now in the open. The devil is no longer trying to hide what he's doing and he's actually trying to deceive many and to also open it up to new age as many of you guys know and maybe took part in or, or again have fallen into the deception but now through the grace of God and the mercy of God your eyes have been opened to see where the deception is and how actually you know was used to get you to step away so this is why it's important because it says if possible that means that the devil will try to even do what to deceive the elect right and I don't know about you, but if we do not know the word, then believe me, we run a much higher chance of being deceived because we don't know the truth. And that's why as the Christians, we have to know what the Bible says. We have to understand what is actually um, in, in the word of God. Okay, so that is why we need to know this. Okay, let me put another scripture for you guys here. Again, uh, let me tell you here, just uh, we're going to go to Jeremiah 14, 14. I'm just going to put it up here. So Jeremiah 14, 14 says like this. And the Lord says, the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false vision, divination, and the worthless things, and the deceit of their hearts. In other words, yes, there are people that claim to be prophets, again, in the churches as well. And they will do what? They prophesy lies. So I don't know about you, but <laughs> I've, I've been hearing a lot of, you know what, even last year, two years ago, you know, oh, don't worry about it. The Lord says everything's going to be fine. You know what? God's going to, you know, give you back all that you've lost and this and that. And in some ways you tend to think, yeah, man, I, I believe that. I want to believe that. I believe that. But at the same time, you hear what other prophets are saying and say, no. Things are going to get tougher. Things are going to get worse. We need to stand strong. We need to seek the Lord. We need to reaffirm our hearts. We need to remove the idols from our hearts. The Lord says that, you know, He's coming soon. And, you know, so we can see on one end, people prophesying maybe maybe not of their good intentions, saying that, hey, don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. Don't worry. It's all going to pass. But yet on the other hand, we see that the Lord always, always doing what? Edifying, exhorting, and bringing consolation to our hearts right so this is why it's very very important for us to look into this right so we can see that from the very beginning that yes there were false prophets and a lot of people again they saw false visions you know and all these things so how do we know when something is from the lord okay the first thing we have to understand that yes god will confirm everything okay i want you to understand this he will confirm everything to two or three different Prof, I mean, uh, witnesses. In other words, when God speaks to you, He will confirm that word. And that's why when we prophesy to someone, I tell people, look, just wait for God to confirm. Whatever has been spoken, wait for God to confirm it. And in some cases, I even ask the person, is it true? What was prophesied to you? Is it true? You know, are we speaking, you know, truly as the Lord reveals? Or is this, again, just simply a, a prophecy out of good intention? Because I can say to you, hey, God's going to use you. God's going to transform the world with you. And he's going to do this. And he's going to do that and all these things. And, you know, that may, that it may be true, but it may also be just simply my good intentions because I want to see that happen in your life. But the real truth is that maybe God is saying, no, no, he's going to use you maybe in this very specific way. And yet, you know, we want to understand and know that God is the one, you know, leading us to do those things, right? So going back to all of this, we can see that a lot of these um, prophets, even from the Old Testament, again, they would prophesy how? Out of divination, and they would do things to deceive many people and to do things that would get people to do things, you know, um, that were not from God, okay? Lamentations 2.14 says like this, your prophets have seen... For you, false and deceptive visions. 
They have not uncovered your iniquity. And this is very true. Okay, what does that mean? That means that in many cases, you know, God will also expose, you know, the sin or expose the heart to reveal truly what is there because God wants to do what? He wants people to change. In other words, this is an exhortation. He'll do it in such a way that he will exhort you, stop sinning, stop doing what you're doing, stop stealing, stop sleeping around, stop doing this, stop doing that. Because he wants you to do what? He wants you to step away from that and spare your soul. You know, how many times have I maybe seen dreams or, sorry, people that have had dreams and where they, they see themselves being left behind, for example. You know, the Lord comes and takes his church and they're left behind in the midst of the tribulations. And they, they come back repented and, and they begin to change their lives around because they know that if they keep going the way they are, they're not going to make it, you know. And the same thing, you know, God uses all of these things. to do. Now, it says to bring back your, you know, your captives, but have envisioned for you false prophecies and delusions, right? That's why we need to be guarded. We need to be discerning. We need to be looking at, okay, wait a minute. What is this person saying? It's okay to question, and I want you to question everything. You need to question what I'm saying. You need to question, again, the prophetic words that people release. You need to question all the things that are being spoken around you because, remember, even if possible, even the elect will be deceived. So I don't want to be deceived. So I need to ask God to confirm the words that are, that are being spoken. I need to ask God that if someone is prophesying, that I need to see, okay, let me see the fruit. What is actually happening in their lives? What do people say about them? You know, what is the evidence that people have against them? What are the things that, you know, may not really fit? We you know the image says one thing, but yet they're saying another thing or their lives say one thing. And yet they're, they're actually, you know, seeing another thing. So this is why it's important. So as, as, as I was mentioned to you, a lot of people today, they say, you know what, why would I need the Holy Spirit then? If I can have the same thing that you can have. I mean, you can prophesy. That means that you can see what people um, maybe um, have in their hearts. Or maybe you have the gift of healing. So why would I need that when I can do the same things that you do? Why would I want to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the Holy Spirit when I can also, you know what, fortune tell and tell people the future? I can heal. I can see into the spiritual realm. I can maybe even... Um, do miracles signs i can even uh discern spirits you know and, and unfortunately that's what's happened a lot of people are tapping into all these demonic expressions and and i guess i call it really spirits because they're the ones giving them the information that they say well you know why would i why would i want the holy spirit when i have access to all this when i'm able to do whatever i want i'm able to sin i'm able to live my life any way i want to and do what I want to do, right? But they don't realize that it's a trap, that we're being drawn by the, the desire for power, the desire to be able to control, to manipulate the circumstances around them and even the people around them, that eventually it begins to produce what? Sorrow, it begins to produce pain because the devil comes to charge and he begins to charge with interest like i said he begins to charge you he'll heal you for one thing but then you get sick for another thing or you you know what you ask for money he gives you that money but then all of a sudden you know what you start getting sick or you know what you ask for um, you know in some ways or uh, maybe love and that person shows up in your in, in your life and you end up loving that person at all but that same person ends up being becoming you know the worst neighbor that you have so all of these things, you know, we have to look at the root. Let me give you an example. You know, I, I, I ministered a couple of while back, you know, maybe about uh, five years ago. And uh, he was telling me uh, that, you know, that she, okay, she had left him, unfortunately, for another woman, okay? And um, what happened was, obviously, this guy was broken. He said, look, I'm, I'm willing to do anything possible to... To get my wife back, I really love her, you know, I really want to spend time. So I began to minister to him, I began to ask questions. And he began to tell me, look, you know, I have to be honest with you, we started off the wrong way. When we were, again, boyfriends, you know, I was going out with another person. And she came in <coughs> and stole, I guess, stole uh, me from my girlfriend. In other words, she interfered. 
and I, you know, I give in. You know, obviously, she allowed me to come in to become intimate with her. And from that moment on, you know what? I said no to my girlfriend, and I began to go out with who was currently my wife. Okay, and I began to ask more questions. So not only did they began the wrong way, but at the same time, I began okay. Tell me a little bit about your your wife. What was she like? What was what her parents like? And she he began to tell me. Look, she her parents were into witchcraft. You know, really weird things would happen to the house. She was very rebellious. You know, I remember this. That's why you know she did the things that she did as well. I was rebellious too. I was not into witchcraft, but she was. Her family was. And he would tell me stories that sometimes he would go over to their house. And, uh, you know, he says, you know what, I could hear things move in the house. I could sometimes smell blood in the house. I could sometimes, you know, sense that there was something there in the house. And he just kept ignoring, ignoring, ignoring it until, you know what, eventually I got married to this woman. And you know what, things seemed to be going really well at first. We had two children. But eventually what happens is that all of this stuff with the witchcraft of rebellion, you know, like I said to you, the witchcraft eventually leads us to sexual immorality. And again, eventually her, his wife became a lesbian without him even realizing this. And one day he, she just leaves him for another woman, right? So this man was delivered. You know, he was set free from all that oppression. Uh, she ended up divorcing him. You know, she was not willing to change. She was not willing to talk. He was willing, but she was not. So eventually he got divorced. He went on. He did his life again. And he started off now on the right foot. So what I'm trying to say with all this is that how we start has a tremendous impact in how we finish or how things would go along the way. If it's rooted in witchcraft, if it was rooted in rebellion, if it was rooted on other types of sins, usually relationship will end up the wrong way unless God intervenes and he begins to transform lives, right? That's why this is very, very important because, you know, the witchcraft is always, always manifested through rebellion. And that's why people do not want to come to God because when they come to God, they have to submit their lives to, again, God, his commandments, his statutes, and his word. And most people today do not want to do that. Okay, so let me go here to another scripture now. I want to talk a little bit about this because I know that this can also be a trigger to many people coming out of the new age. But yet, I want to show you that it's biblical. And I want you to understand that the devil is excellent at copying what God has done. So he grabs something that God has done and he perverts it. He manipulates it. He, uh, you know, uh, completely corrupts it. Whether it's wisdom, whether it's beauty, whether it's power, whether it's strength, it doesn't matter. The devil will grab and copy. He cannot create. He will always try to copy and do what he wants to do. Okay? So, I'm just going to bring this up here one second. Let me just um, bring, um, again, 1 Corinthians 13, no, sorry, 12. Okay? And you're going to see... Um, what type of gifts or manifestations of the power of God, the Holy Spirit, uh, takes place in our lives so that uh, we will also learn to, rec learn to recognize them, okay? So this is 1 Corinthians 12. Okay. And let me share my screen. Okay. So... I want you to read this for me, okay? So it says, now concerning spiritual gifts. Now, these are gifts that come from who? From the Holy Spirit, okay? It says, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. In other words, I want you to know about them. I want you to understand them. I want you to learn to operate in them. It says, you know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols. In other words, we were all led astray and being drawn to worship other things, you know, money, maybe women, maybe, you know, um, you know, a stature, social class, you name it. It says, however you live, it says, therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. And I want you to understand this. No one that is actually a real Christian, okay, can actually say that Jesus is cursed. No one can say that Jesus is Lord, okay, except by the Holy Spirit. And this is a test. When you're praying for deliverance for someone, and when a spirit begins to manifest, you know, sometimes the spirit will pretend that it leaves, will, will tell you, oh, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And the spirit will begin to speak to the person. 
And you can ask that spirit or you can ask that person, is Jesus Lord? You know, and or, or just say that Jesus is Lord, you can ask him. And if they're not able to say it, then you know exactly that you're dealing with a spirit that is pretending again to have, you know, been casted out out of that person. So you got to keep praying for that person to be able to do that. And that's what happens to a lot of these things. You know, the spirit operating behind these demons or behind, again, these witches or, or, or sorcerers or whatever it is. Obviously, they cannot do this. Okay, let's keep going. Number four. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So in other words, the first thing you have to understand is that when someone has the third eye, they will always look to be praised. They will always look for their own benefit. They will always look for profit for themselves. When God gives us a gift, the profit is not for us. In other words, the benefit is not for us, but rather for the body of Christ. That's the first thing. So it's the other way around. God wants to use your gift to bless other people. And when it comes to the third eye, the devil gives them that gift so that they can be blessed through monetary, uh, again, uh, charges or, or so forth, right? Number eight says, for to one is given the word of wisdom. In other words, God will give you wisdom. And what is this wisdom? This is the wisdom of God that helps what it helps bring peace. It helps bring, you know, a clarity to a problem, to a situation. And it helps you also find out what to do so that when you speak, you know, you will knock down the arguments that come from other people that try to question what you're trying to say when it comes to the Word of God. Okay? That is the, wisdom, the gift of wisdom. Then it says, through the same Spirit, it says, to another, the Word of Knowledge. What is the Word of Knowledge? That is information about the past or the present that God reveals to you. For example, God may reveal to me that, okay, you know what, there's someone here, for example, that is having a problem with their intestines, for example. And the Lord says he wants to heal, he wants to restore, and he wants to. So in other words, if God reveals this to me, the benefit is not for me. The benefit is for the person that is going through that problem in their digestive system and that they need to do, they, God wants to heal them right now. That's why he's doing it. In other words, the third eye would operate a different way. Oh, they would say, oh, I see that maybe you're sick here. Somebody's sick with your intestines, uh, whatever. And that's as far as it goes. It's just information. But with God, actually, God wants to heal. He wants to restore. He wants to do things. Another, you know, a thing of knowledge would be, you know, what is somebody here that is having, for example, marriage problems, and they're having the, the marriage problems are rooted in the money, but the Lord says, do not worry because I will bring peace and I will do this and I will do that. So in other words, he tells you what the problem is. He gives you the information, but also he gives you a solution. And he gives you, again, uh, again a word of encouragement, or again, or, or edification, or correction, or consolation when he does that. Okay, so that's the gift of wisdom through the Spirit. It says, to another one, the word of uh, says, to another faith by the same Spirit. In other words, God can give you supernatural faith that right there and then you can pray and whatever you pray for will come to pass. That is the gift of faith. And again, the reason is so that the body of Christ or people around you can come to know that there is a real God. It says to another one, the gifts of healings. In other words, yes, we can pray for the sick and they will be healed. Why? Because the power of God gives us, you know what, the power to heal people. And it's a gift. So Many people have the gift of healing. That does not make them healers, and it does not make them sorcerers. It's just simply God working through the sign, which is the sign of healing. Again, to another, the working of miracles. Again, miracles such as, okay, you know what, uh, like Jesus did, you know, he turned the wine into, sort of the water into wine. Again, he walked on water, and he did many miracles such as the multiplication of the bread. And God will allow you to do these type of miracles, again, not for your benefit, but the benefit of other people. So another one, prophecy. Prophecy is things to come. Again, it tells you about the future. And only God knows the future, not the devil. The devil may know partially certain things because he's planning to do certain things so he can tell you in advance what he's planning. 
but yet only God knows what's actually going to happen. To another one, discerning the spirits, that means that you're able to discern how and when or when demons are trying to attack, like in the case of, again, of Candace, saying, you know what, there's a spirit of infirmity trying to come over a house. That is discernment of spirits. You know, God gives you a name so that you can fight back and pray against any type of spirit. And again, in, in the other case, we have to another, the different kinds of tongues, and that is why we pray in tongues. It is biblical. And sometimes, yes, God can give you the tongue that sounds more like another language. It says, and to another one, interpretation of tongues. In other words, God will give you the interpretation of what is being spoken. Let me tell you, and I've, and I've come to, the, to know all these things and to see that even the devil can fake the tongues. And when the devil fakes the tongues, you see that um, they sound very um, w without rhythm, no harmony to them, and you can feel the oppression when someone prays in false tongues. And usually someone will pray in false tongues because there is a demon in them that tries to disguise itself as being super uh, religious or super sensitive or, I guess, spirit-filled so that people will no longer pray for them. But I tell you, you know what? Sometimes people are not able to pray in tongues because there's something that holds them back. And this is why we need to pray for people for deliverance, right? All of these things that, again, they're being said there and spoken, you know what, they're very, very important. So the way, the reason why I'm bringing this up today is because this is one of the reasons why people do not want to come to Christ and they're not interested in seeking God because they can find power or the power that they're looking for or the power that has deceived them or lured them or simply uh, seduced them that gets them away from God. But as Christians... We need to understand that God is the one who created this. God is the one who has given his church those gifts so that when people see them in operation, they will know that God truly, truly is alive in Israel. Amen. So I want to pray and I want to ask the Lord to just, you know, completely, completely remove any type of third eye, any type of discernment that does not come from him, any type of divination that may still be operating in your life, especially if you've partook in all of these things. And especially, you know what, if you have, you know, partaken in yoga, kundalini, or these type of activation of the chakras, because it is always the same spirit. It is the ancient serpent, python, you know, leviathan, if you want to call it. It is the ancient spirit, like a serpent that goes up, and wraps around your, your your back until it opens up the third eye. So we need to renounce to this and we need to cast it out. And that's why I want to continue to encourage you to fast this week if you feel that this is still there. If you feel that, you know what, all these things have been opened in you, then we need to close them up, all the chakras, close up the third eye. And ask the Lord to remove that ancient serpent like we saw in the case of Paul saying, you know what, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. So that's what we can pray for the spirit of Python, the spirit of divination, for that third eye to close and for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to begin to manifest in your life, to begin to show and to be, uh, you know, use people so that the body of Christ can be a blessing. And I truly believe that many of you here will begin to operate again in the gift of prophecy, not in the gift of divination, the gift of prophecy. Many of you will begin to operate in the gift of word of knowledge, in the gift of miracles, in the gift of healing. And, and I want you not to be afraid because maybe in the past, you were actually doing divination. Maybe you were doing healings on other people. Maybe you were doing already, you know, a fortune telling or, or telling. So that's why in some ways, a lot of people that come from this uh, background, they're afraid to operate in the gifts because they feel in some ways that it's a regression to them to open up that third eye or to come into that place. But I want you to understand that, no, it is different when God, the Holy Spirit operates for you and a perfect example of this, and I'll close with this, is uh, Moses when he shows up before the Pharaoh. What happens is that God tells Moses, go tell Pharaoh to leave my people alone and to let them go because I'm going to set them free and take them out of Egypt. So Moses goes with Aaron. And, and God tells Moses, you know what? This sign you will do, grab your staff and throw it to the ground and it will become a serpent. Okay? So that's what he does. He goes... Uh, I'm going to show you that God is really who he says. He's the great I am. And he throws his staff on the ground and it becomes a serpent. And, and Pharaoh says, oh, 
has nothing. Hey, where are my magicians? Come, bring them, bring them over. And surely enough, the magicians throw their stuff too, and they become snakes. But the interesting thing was to see that although they're, they're, they're both snakes, you know, you got Moses, again, staff became a snake, and there also became a snake. Moses' snake ate, okay, the, the, the magicians from Pharaoh's snakes, and he was able to overcome them and show that his snake was much more powerful than the snake that the magicians were doing. In other words, when God begins to use you, the prophetic gift, the gift of healing, the gift of discernment of spirits, the gift of tongues, the protection of tongues, the gift of miracles, will be much more powerful. And we'll be able to destroy and overcome, you know what, anything that may try to come, you know, through the sorcerers, through the witches, and destroy the whatever work these shamans have done on people, these healers have done on people, for them to receive impartation of spirits, or for them to receive impartations of you know, uh, I guess false anointings or whatever it may be, the Holy Spirit has the power to destroy all of that. And that's why when we pray for deliverance, a lot of the times the gifts of the Holy Spirit will be at play, will be, will not play, will be, in, will be activated in the person praying for the people to have the sermon to say, hey, listen, tell me about this because they're seeing this, they're receiving this. Or tell me more about this. Have you done this? Have you done this? And it's God leading the conversation or given in this case, you know, what I what happens to me is that God gives me sometimes visions. He tells me what to ask. He reveals certain things and I ask so that what I'm receiving may be confirmed so that, you know, what God God's power can be manifested, and when we pray for them, you know what, whatever is not of God can be removed completely. And that is what happens. It is the anointing of God, the power of God that comes and begins to bring peace and begin to manifest. So I want you to be open to this. In what sense? Open to the idea that, yes, God also can empower you to move in the supernatural, to move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, with what intent? Not so that you can feel good about yourself, not so that you can show off what God can do through you. No, it is so that other people can come to believe the signs and the wonders they've seen take place through you. In other words, Jesus said, you will do these things and even greater things than I have, right? So we have to understand this. That's why the church needs to be empowered. That's why you need to be empowered. We all need to be empowered with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be the one, again, to teach us all things, to lead us, to reveal the depths of God to us. In other words, God's mysteries, God's secrets, God's, God's knowledge, His wisdom that will be revealed to us. And we will be able to walk a life that is really, really like we see in the book of Acts, a supernatural life, a life, again, see, the disciples were not looking for power. They were just simply being obedient to God. That is the difference. When you are obedient to God, God automatically comes over you and begins to tell you, do this, pray for this person, go here, cast out demon there, intercede here, and you follow whatever he, the Holy Spirit leads you, and the signs and the wonders will begin to follow you. You don't have to go after the signs and the wonders. You don't, have, you don't have to go after the power. They will begin to follow you. Why? Because you will be able to discern and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and to be able to tell when false prophets, when uh, you know false teachers, when all this deception that is around us begins to be exposed, you will be able to tell who is actually from God and who is not from God. Amen. Let us pray. And um, I know there's a lot of comments here. You know what? Uh, and I want to, again, like I tell you, uh, you know, God is going to begin to open up more and to teach you more as you begin to read more and understand that there's so much more that we need to understand and, and God wants to do through our lives. Anyway, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much and we praise you. We worship you. Father, and I pray right now, Lord God, that you may close, Lord God, any third eye, Lord God, that may be still open in everyone that is in this place. In the name of Jesus, Father, we renounce it. So again, if you feel today the third eye is still open in you, if you're seeing things that you're not supposed to be seeing, if you're feeling things that you're not supposed to be feeling or things that you don't want to see, if you are somehow having knowledge of things that are about to happen, the future, things like that, just say in the name of Jesus, Father, I renounce I renounce to every third eye. I renounce to every chakra that's been opened. I ask you to close every chakra. Forgive me for opening them. I repent for opening up. And Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit may come and begin to remove every spirit, Lord God, and close every door that I open 
by either practicing yoga, kundalini, or whatever it is, you know, the activation of the chakras, so that I can bring glory to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray, I renounce to it, and I embrace and I receive your Holy Spirit to lead me, to guide me, to teach me, and to give me discernment so that I can tell God when there's a false prophet, when there's someone, a wolf dressed as sheep, trying to deceive, you know, even impossible, delight. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we just pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I want you to know one thing. You know what? Normally what I would do is I would pray for people uh, and begin to, to, to ask the Lord to move in this and this is based on the word that has been spoken today. But because we're fasting, I'm just waiting. I feel the Lord telling me, just wait. And that's been, I've been asking a lot of you to just wait, wait, wait until next Sunday when we pray for deliverance, we pray for healing, we pray for the breakthroughs. And I want you to begin to ask for that because you know what? It's coming, it's coming. And that's why I believe the Holy Spirit is going to move and we're going to see it. So next Sunday, I'm going to ask all of you to turn on your cameras because I want to see your face. I want to see what is happening. I want to see what type of manifestation is taking place. Maybe God will give us prophetic words for some of you guys uh, next one, next Sunday night. Maybe God, like I said, will begin to um, allow for the devil in this case to begin to manifest so that we can pray specifically for those that are experiencing those manifestations so in other words we're going to go through a, a self-deliverance in other words i will tell you say this repeat this close this door repent from this repent from that confess this and you're going to begin to confess all the things that you've done the things that we that as the holy spirit leads us to pray and right there and then you're going to begin to experience that deliverance that breakthrough and you're going to begin to experience how these things begin to come out but it happens how by humbling ourselves by repenting and again by fasting so that truly truly as we confess our sins we can begin to go through that transformation amen so i want to open it up for comments questions for q a anybody would like to uh, say anything add anything please go ahead just unmute your microphone or i'm sorry if you've already uh, typed in a lot of stuff i'm sorry I'm, I'm just having a hard time catching up with all the comments here but we need to pray and understand that, you know what, God is the one that can uh, set us free and bring transformation into our lives. Amen? Comments, questions, anybody? Yes, amen. Free as Lord. Yes, I mean, okay. So would it be, um, auntie, to still leave the fluoride in the water? does uh, calcify people's pineal gland but is not the third eye okay so the pineal gland okay the pineal gland is obviously created by god okay and yes it may be a way in which we are become or can become more sensitive again okay, to the spiritual realm or more sensitive in some ways to the, you know what god is doing and i say this because you know god is the one that has given us everything that we have okay we are spirit, we are soul and body. We understand that. So I believe, you know, and I can tell you this, that the more stuff we put in our minds, okay, the more knowledge, the more, uh, you know, entertainment, the more whatever, we can be, our head can become so busy that it may be very difficult for us to hear God's voice clearly, right? So when you begin to remove the distraction, you begin to remove all these things that are fighting with the Holy Spirit, then what happens is that, you know, you begin to become much more sensitive. You begin to receive much more clearly the information that comes from God. And you begin to experience, you know, as, as, as you dive in to pray for the Lord, with the Lord, you begin to have more revelation. Now, the pineal gland, yes, it may be a way or I guess, uh, I guess a gland in which allows us to become much more sensitive to the spiritual realm. And it may be true that fluoride, yeah, may be calcified, but we have to be careful with this. And I say why, because remember, it's not the pineal gland that will give you the revelation. No, it is the Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand that whether the Holy Spirit uses the pineal gland to speak to us or not, I mean, that is up to him. He will figure out how he does it. But I know that when he speaks to us, it's very clearly he speaks into our hearts. Sometimes he speaks into our minds. Sometimes he allows us to have vision. Sometimes he allows us to have this. And these are the gifts 
of the Holy Spirit. Now, they come from the Holy Spirit. They don't come from within us. So whether the pineal gland has to do something with that or not is not the issue. The issue that matters is that it is, who is it coming from? Is it coming from the devil or is it coming from God? That is the main thing here. So we need to ask God, God, use me, reveal to me. And God will use whatever he wants to, to speak to you and to make you more sensitive to uh, his voice and to what he wants you to receive. Amen? Okay? So let me see what else. Um, the deliver James says, the deliverance through the Holy Spirit always result in feeling better. Well, I can tell you this. When, when Jesus was praying for people, he would always pray and he would say this, okay? So he would speak to the demon and says, go, get out. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of infirmity, get out. But it was through the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus was able to do so, okay? So when the Holy Spirit comes and sets you free, okay, you will automatically feel the change. You will automatically feel that you feel lighter. In some cases, you will feel, of course, after every deliverance, you will always feel very weak. You will always feel very tired. You will feel exhausted. And in most cases, you will also feel very hungry too, okay? So what happens is that after you get delivered or if the deliverance is halfway there, yes, you will feel a major improvement, but you will not feel the complete, uh, how would I say this, the closure, you know? In other words, you will still feel, you know what, I, I feel that something broke, but yet there's still something else. And that's, that feeling of something else will not let you be at peace until you keep pressing on and you keep pushing. Sometimes that's why deliverance can take two or three hours sometimes, and sometimes even longer. And that's what sometimes we have to pray two or three, four different times because, you know what, as we begin to have more revelation of how the enemy got in, or as you begin to remember of the things that you've done, then more layers begin to remove so that the devil can be exposed to see how is it that he actually came in, right? So this is why it's important, James, that you begin to, to do this and yet you begin to feel much better. So with the fasting and with prayer, believe me, we are allowing the Holy Spirit to work even stronger in us because our flesh becomes weak, the devil loses a grip, and we're going to begin to see greater power manifested in our lives. Amen? Alina says, I feel very uh, not sure since I got on this uh, live. Okay, so Alina, let me pray for you right now. What does that mean? That means that you're being set free. As the word of God is coming right now, you're going through deliverance right now, okay? If you feel nauseous, if you feel, uh, you know, that somehow, you know, something's not quite right, let me just pray for you right now, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for Alina right now. And we command, Lord God, every spirit, Lord God, every unclean spirit and every um, ancient serpent right now, that is the spirit that we've been talking about, to come out out of Alina in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I command you right now, let go, let go of Alina. You're going to come up, come up, come up, come up, come up, and you're going to come in silence. You're not going to make a scene. You're not going to make noise. You're not going to make anything that will hurt or or um, or, or uh, damage Alina in any way whatsoever. So that will let go. I command you to let go. Spirit of divination, get out completely out of our life right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray, look at for everybody else as well well that may be going through something like this father we pray and we command look at all these demons to leave right now the spirit of darkness spirit of python look at a spirit of leviathan spirit of jezebel look at spirit of darkness in the name of jesus spirit of divination in the name of jesus ancient serpent get out so you feel cramps too in the name of jesus i mean that that is evidence uh Lina, that there's a demonic presence manifesting right now in you that is actually being pressured into coming out. And that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. That comes through the word of the Holy Spirit. Now, is it going to come out right now? Well, we're praying so that it does. But even if it doesn't, I know next week it will be done because we are fasting. So in the name of Jesus, Father, we keep praying for Alina. Let that power come right now. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we command look at every spirit in Alina right now to leave Every demon, leave. We destroy every work of the devil right now in her life right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we cry out, Lord God, that your spirit would come over her right now, giving her strength, Lord God, and courage and boldness. And Father, we command in the name of Jesus, ancient serpent, let go of her right now 
and we command you to leg over throat, leg over back, leg over spine, leg over neck, leg over eyes, leg over the mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray in Jesus Christ. We just pray. Amen and amen. Okay. So it says, whoa, uh, manifest in the heart now, out now. Amen. Amen. That's it. So it says, uh, Rohini, we're going to pray Rohini today. But again, I want you to, again, understand that next week we're going to be praying very firmly, very strongly for all these things. So, Father, we pray for Rohini. Father, we pray for your daughter. Father, in the name of Jesus, any spirit, Lord God, of, again, perversion, Lord God, any seductive spirit, Lord God, any spirit of lust, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, any lying and deceiving spirit, Lord God, any spirit of rebellion, Lord God, and witchcraft, in the name of Jesus, Father, we cast it out, out of the daughter, Lord God, of Rohini. In the name of Jesus, Father, Father, remove. Father, we know that we have to take that initial step, Lord God. We have to take, Lord God, and just like many in the Bible came to Jesus, Jesus, please heal my daughter, set my daughter free father we pray and we cry out for mercy for our healing lord god that you may also extend lord god so in the name of jesus father we pray lord god and we ask lord god that your spirit will come right now over her lord god bringing conviction of her sin and setting her free in jesus name we just pray father god amen and amen Thank you, Jesus. We just gave you praise. We give you, Lord. How do you feel, Alina? Please type it in. How do you feel right now, Alina? Um, thank you, Jesus. You know, believe me, guys. Uh, God's going to do something tremendous. I can feel it in my heart. I can feel it in my spirit. He's going to do something tremendous with this group. And I believe that all of you, again, have a tremendous plan. And next uh, Sunday will be the beginning of something tremendous, a complete transformation and change that you will see. You will be empowered. You will receive, again, um, an impartation from the Holy Spirit, not from me, from the Holy Spirit, to be able to move and operate in a different understanding, a different wisdom. And you're going to begin to see how these, um, again, demons, how these um, entities, how this darkness will begin to flee from people as you begin to pray for them. It says uh, Alina says, I feel my feet very hot and in days, foggy. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that the, that fire of the Lord is coming through. It's coming through more fire, more fire. Fire in the belly, look at. Fire in the legs, look at. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. More, more, more. I'm going to ask, you know, if, if you're there, just extend your hands or just pray for Alina right now, wherever you are. Pray, look at. We pray for that fire, fire to come, fire to come, fire. More, 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 more. In the name of Jesus. Father, let the blood of the Lamb, Lord God, come and burn, Lord God. Burn, burn, burn devils. We command you to lay go over feet, lay go over body, lay go over legs, lay go over stomach, lay go over back, lay go over eyes, Lord God, lay go over ears. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out, come out in the name of Jesus. No tingling, nothing in the, in the, in the circulatory system, nothing in the muscles, nothing in the bones. In the name of Jesus, come out and come out to the skin if you have to. In the name of Jesus, we just command you, devil, let go, let go, let go. Keep coming out, keep coming out. In Jesus' name, 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 we just pray. Amen. So you see, God is moving already. All we have to do is believe. And we're getting closer and closer to this fast, and you're going to be set free. We're all going to experience a tremendous transformation in healing. So again, I want you to understand this, okay? So Anyone else feel something? Are you feeling something right now? Do you feel anything take place? If not, like I said, I mean, maybe it's not your day. But I want to tell you that I want you to believe. You know, again, James feels a hot face. So in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, just say, James, let go of me, devil. Let go. I command you in the name of Jesus to let go of me. And I cry out for the fire of God. So ancient serpent, let go of my third eye. Let go of my pineal gland. Let go of me. Let go of my mind. Let go of my back. Let go of my... I belong to Jesus. Just say, Jesus, shut down my third eye. I do not want to receive from the devil. I do not want to hear from the devil. I do not want to feel anything from the devil. I only want to feel and hear from you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jasmine says, I feel very relaxed. I mean, that's the peace of God coming again and giving you uh, that peace and coming of your life. You know, sometimes that's how we feel when things begin to leave. We feel very relaxed. We feel the peace of God. Again, that is what is happening. So if you can pray in tongues, yes, that's what uh, Ariel is saying. That's why we pray in tongues. So that when we pray in tongues, you know what? We're praying directly from our spirit to God's spirit. And we know 
uh, we don't know how to pray sometimes. And when we pray in the Spirit, you know what? We automatically begin to pray or our Spirit begins to pray in such a way that it needs to pray so that we can go to that Lord. So again, if you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues right now. And pray and pray and pray, believing that something is taking place, believing that something's going to break loose right now, believing that you're being set free, believing that the fire of God is falling upon you, believing that you are experiencing a transformation and change right now. And that God is going to do even more, even more in your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me just keep reading. It says, my fiancé is wondering how to treat bad dreams. Pray over it. Well, bad dreams sometimes, you know what? They can be an insight into what's happening or what's happened in your life. Sometimes, yes, the devil may use the bad dreams to put fear in us. So we need to pray and say, God, cover my dreams you know, with the blood of Jesus, cover my conscience, my subconscious. I give you my dreams, Lord God. I give you control of my dreams. And any spirit, you know, that is trying to come to put fear in me or condemnation or whatever it is that maybe happened in those dreams, just pray against the lust or whatever it is so that you will begin to experience those uh, dreams, uh, that freedom as well. Okay. Uh, let me see somebody else uh, again. Uh, mighty breakthrough for my family and men. Uh, feel hot and, and, and gross. <laughs> I have a few questions if you see this. Okay, uh, by all means, Raven, uh, if you have questions, type them in, or, or by all means, just unmute, unmute, yeah, go ahead, please, if you have, I mean, I, I know deliverance is taking place, guys, this is not the night that we're going to focus on deliverance, but God can do whatever he's doing, so let God continue doing what he's doing, if you have a question, by all means, if you feel something, by all means, just say it, and God's going to set you free, go ahead, Raven. Okay, so, um, uh, Ooh, yeah, I'm already like distracted. Um, but, uh, okay. So I had a quick, long story short, I had a really like off experience at this church I went to. Cause like at first, um, I was like, Ooh, they speak in tongues and like, they do a bunch of deliverances and they have, they do like hundreds of baptisms a year. So I was like, okay, yeah, they understand what's going on. And like, they kind of do. Um, but basically like I just kept feeling um like a serpent energy in that room and they would have multiple services where they didn't even read anything out of the bible but they would be like oh haha we didn't even preach today but these testimonies were the preaching and and stuff like that and then um so and then of course there was like a guy kind of high up in the church but like not everyone knows him um he he's 40 and lives with two 23 year old girls and even knowing about mk and stuff like that i fell into that um like full-blown handler but all of them can use jesus's name so i i know in the bible it, it even says like you know people will you know, do this and this and, and say, oh, but I did all this in your name. And he's going to be like, I never knew you though. So how, how can we really test them? Cause like in, in like deep down, I am like, I mean, within two weeks I've like cut off like 50 people, but <laughs> like, I, I know for a fact, like I'm not supposed to be with those people, with that church, even though, you know, not, not all of them are like that. Um, but you know, if, if someone were to ask me, I would be honest, but you know, regarding, um, I guess like obvious evidence, mm -hmm. I don't know how to really explain that because, you know, they're doing deliverances, they're doing baptisms, they're using Jesus's name um but then they also force tongues there's no interpretation um at all like they only focus on the gifts they're not focusing on like other stuff and they think like um like they don't question anything that they themselves are doing and like with the handler guy um all of them are like oh if you leave the church or joseph was like oh if you like if you 
stop coming around us like oh you're not listening to God and stuff like that and it's just like how, how would I how would I explain that to one of them if they asked me like why haven't you come back like why don't you come to our house anymore Mm -hmm. that's a good question so the first thing i will tell you okay you you answered it yourself which is okay uh you can see the evidence that this man is already living with two uh, 24 year olds right so automatically <laughs> he's already sitting and he's telling you you know what i do whatever i want i'm not going to do what the bible tells me and automatically that is fruit of what he's going through right the second thing yes the word of god always always has to be present because the holy spirit will move based on the word of god so if today i'm talking about deliverance for example i want to talk about the gifts of the holy spirit god will move based on what i'm talking about if i'm talking about healing if i'm talking about sin you know all of these things that's how the lord will move as the word of god begins to be you know talked and, and, and declared now having said that you can also um use uh what the word of god says when it comes to okay is there manipulation is there control is there um in some ways um you know like i was saying to um people that are trying to um convince you in other words to do something that you don't want to because see god never pushes god never uh tries to convince anybody of anything if you, in fact if you look at you know jesus jesus would never convince he would just tell people look repent repent change your way so if sin is never spoken of then you know automatically that is not of god because sin has to be talked about because sin is the one thing that holds us away from god and unfortunately i can tell you because i, I know a lot of these churches that the focus only on the gifts so they only focus on the supernatural they only focus on again the uh, i guess the, the the signs and the wonders and yet you look at people's lives and this is another way that you look at look at how many people are actually going through transformations how many people are actually going through maybe their marriages get you know um you know restored maybe someone it's not about the healing it's, it's more about okay tell me how people's lives are changing you know someone used to be an addict okay they're no longer an addict someone used to be an adulteress they're no longer an adulteress someone is actually you know used to be a thief they're no longer a thief that is the real transformation that needs to take place so that is how you can tell people look I'm not seeing changes in people. I see, yes, people get delivered. I see people get uh, healed. I see people get transformed. But yet, there's no real fruit of the evidence that God is actually working in people. In other words, you can see what are people's characters like? Are they are they uh, always um, in quarrels, fightings, envies, jealousies, or is the fruit of the Holy Spirit manifesting, which is peace, love, tenderness, meekness, kindness, you know, patience, and self-control, and so forth. So all of these things will begin to tell you whether or not that church is operating really under the Word of God, or they're being deceived by these false Holy Spirits that wants to manipulate and control people. And that's one of the things with witchcraft, okay? Witchcraft is always about manipulation, control, and deception, okay? Always think about that always always anyone that wants to try to control you that is a form of witchcraft anyone that wants to try to manipulate you that is another form of again witchcraft and anyone that wants to i guess in this case uh, deceive you okay obviously you know the devil is the one behind that okay so this is how you can tell whether or not they're doing so if someone asks why have you been back he says you know what I says, I've been reading the Word of God, and the Word of God tells me that by the fruit you shall know them. And I'm not seeing the fruit that the Bible says the Christian should have. In other words, I'm not seeing transformational lives. I'm not seeing people operate truly in love or kindness or, or you know, self-control. In fact, I'm seeing the opposite. I see that people here are still fighting with their parents. They're still fighting with their loved ones. They're still fighting with each other. And I'm not seeing what the bible says that i should be seeing that's one answer that you can say another thing is look i believe that god moves based on his word the holy spirit is what brings alive the word of god gives power to the word of god and if the word of god is not spoken is not preached then you know what what holy spirit is actually operating here because the holy spirit will always operate based on what is written based on what has uh, what what um what the word of god says and the holy spirit will always lead people to jesus so that's another way you can find out is jesus being mentioned enough or is it mainly just holy spirit holy spirit holy spirit holy spirit holy spirit right and that's another sign because when when the holy spirit operates he will always point people to jesus he will lift the name of jesus 
And then Jesus will always lift the Father. So the Father always gets the glory. So Jesus points us to the Father, and the Holy Spirit points us to Jesus. And if Jesus is not mentioned, believe me, then that means that only the Holy Spirit is being mentioned, and the Holy Spirit will never, ever take away the glory from Jesus. Amen. Does that help? Does that answer questions? Yes, that was actually really helpful. And that just like, that just ties back into how like a lot of this stuff can be tricky to navigate if, um, if our main priority is like, if, if our main priority is not reading the Bible and trying to actually listen to God, because like anyone can just say like, oh yeah, God told me this. And it's like, did he though? Like, I don't think God told you to secretly th that you're going to marry that girl one day. Like, no, no, but it's like, they have, they don't have the fruits, but they have, of course, like the Bible states this, like they have the signs and wonders. Yeah. People have been saved from addictions, but yet they're almost still the same person, just minus the addiction or minus, um, the crime you know like on the inside they're still who they were before it's just on the outside mm -hmm. you know yeah not actual fruits just like pictures of fruit and that's the evidence right there see the heart has to change that is the first thing that changes is our heart you know we begin to experience you know a transformation from within and then it begins to manifest on the outside. That's why I tell you, when when someone is touched by God, they can never ever go back to being the same person. You know, yes, some some uh, ways of thinking are still there, but that's why it says we are transformed by the renewal of our minds. Right. So the more we read, the more we get transformed. And yes, like you said, many of these churches do have these signs where people fall. You know, there's prophecy. People speak in tongues, and it's only about, you know, a, a, a seeking of the manifestation of this power, but yet they're not interested in how do I change my life to be more uh, pleasing to God? You know, how do I, you know, what, how do I stop sinning? How do I stop watching pornography? How do I stop, you know, doing all these things? It's never about that. It's more about, okay, no, 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 just get touched by the Holy Spirit and everything will be all right. Okay. So. Anyway, God bless you. That's an excellent uh, question, Raven. Uh, I know that many people may have other questions. Let me see uh, another one from Taylor. says, do you think that I came? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, anybody wants to say the answer to the question? Go ahead, Ariel. I was going to ask if you could expand upon, like, the division of families when it comes to Christ. Because there's, like, there's definitely points of whether, like, fighting or dividing on Christ. Like, just, like, what you feel led to share about when we have Christ and our family doesn't have Christ or maybe they have him, but it's not the same way. Like they don't actually have the Holy spirit. It's just a lot of different facets of all of that. Mm -hmm. Very true. I'll tell you this, you know, yes, when we come to Christ, okay. Unfortunately, we all have to pay a price and that price sometimes may be manifested as persecution, sometimes rejection. Sometimes, you know what, we may have to, uh, and go through moments of uh, really ridiculing us and uh, people mocking us, but even from our own families. And, you know, I think Taylor was saying here, yes, Jesus did not come to bring peace, but he came with the sword to divide, you know, in this case, parents and children, you know, mother and a daughter, a father and a son, and so forth. So eventually we all have to draw a line. Now, as we begin to tell people that we're Christians, that we begin to make change in our lives, People are going to wonder, okay, wh why are you changing? Why this? And there will always be a friction at the beginning because we are saying, you know what? I no longer want to we be the way that I used to, but now I'm embracing a new way of thinking. And that time or that period for people to see an actual fruit may take some time. It may take months. It may take a year sometimes. Or sometimes, no. Sometimes it may be almost immediate. But people want to see, okay, wait a minute. You claim to be a Christian, but you're still doing all this bad stuff. It doesn't make sense. But when you start saying, hey, I'm a believer now, I'm going to go into church and do this, and then all of a sudden, you know, they see that you're no longer swearing or you're no longer drinking, you're no longer doing the things that you used to do, then they begin to wonder, wait a minute, she, she's really changing or he's really changing. So obviously there's a real change and transformation taking place that gives away the, the fruit 
that is beginning to manifest in your life. So that's why it's important. And yes, there will always be divisions between darkness and light. The Bible says that we're all darkness. It doesn't say that we are in darkness. It says that we are darkness until Jesus Christ translates us from the darkness into the light. So we wear darkness, but now we are light. We are in the light, okay? So that means anyone that does not have a revelation of who Jesus Christ is, just because, you know what, I say, Lord, 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 doesn't mean that I'll be saved. The Bible even says that even the devil believes in God, right? Excuse me. Even the devil, demons, they believe in God. They know who God is. But just because I know who he is does not make me, I would say this, a Christian. A Christian is someone that believes in Jesus Christ and obeys Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, if you love me, obey my commandments. So it is by the walking, by beginning to reflect the life of Jesus, by beginning to have his character, his mind, by beginning to have his priorities, by beginning to live a life that brings glory to God the Father, that is how people begin to say, hey, you must be a Christian because you don't do this and you don't do that and you do this. So in other words, without you having to tell people, people will begin to ask you, are you a Christian? And it says, how do you know? Or what would you say this? Well, because you don't do this and you don't do that. And, and let that be the thing that give, give, you know, gives us away rather than me saying, oh, I'm a Christian. By the way, I'm a Christian. But yet, you know, I'm living with my girlfriend. I'm living, you know, a life, the vida loca. And yet uh, my life does not reflect what the Bible says that a Christian should be living by, right? So that is to answer your, your point there, um, Ariel. I see and I saw a few more things here. Believe me, please, if you have a question, I think Alina, I'm sure how you're feeling right now. By all means, if you want to say something, please go ahead and say it or anyone else, um, you know, um, that you would like to. If you if you remember the the, 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 the teachings on, on Jim Durkin for purpose and vision, it talks about that our purpose in life is to bring glory to God. But God's vision for our life is divided in three parts. And I remind you of this. It says the first part is you need to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ, into his likeness. In other words, if your life is not changing, if your character is not changing, if you are not, if you're the same person that you were a year ago, that means that you're not allowing God to change you, to transform you. The gospel is having no effect in you, even if you know the whole Bible. Because, you know what, how can I disciple the whole world? Or how can I keep the unity of the body when myself, my character is not an example to be followed, right? So, you know, I cannot tell and make disciples when I myself am not a disciple of Jesus. It makes no sense. And the same thing is I got to keep the unity. I got to make peace. I got to remove the envy, the jealousies from me. Or I got to expose it as well so that we can all walk in, in unity and love and allow the Holy Spirit to keep us together and to, to you know, make us work together. And the third thing is I got to focus on, on reaching those that are lost and discipling. In other words, Teach him what you know. Even if you know a little bit, just teach him what you know. Because when you do those three things, three things, you'll be able to measure whether or not you are truly, truly bringing, you know, purpose or glory to God. Amen. Uh, let me see what else we have here. Um, um, Hi. Yes, go ahead, Doug. Go ahead. Um, we we're going to ask, too, like, if you could um, point us towards the scriptures and how important it is, just how we were mentioning, Greg was mentioning how that, like, that man was living with the women, how, like, we got into last week, you know, the sexual immorality, but how just living with another partner or a boyfriend, girlfriend, casual relationships, just how that is just um, really looked down upon by God. Mm -hmm. well, for the same reason, I mean, God tells us that, you know, any sex uh, outside of marriage, you know, is obviously sexual immorality, you know, uh, fornication, adultery, you know, homosexuality, you name it. All those things are a sin. And the reason why is because obviously God wants us to be in covenant, again, man and a woman, and that, you know, God created sex to be holy. And, you know, we know that we are holy. And he has given us, I guess, a choice and I guess a free will to do as we want to. Again, unfortunately, many people choose to do what they want. In other words, they rebel against God's word rather than actually following what it says. And unfortunately, for a lot of people, they do not know that this is wrong because they've never heard it, they've never read it, or because simply now popular culture is telling us, you know what? No, don't get married. Just simply, you know, get together first and actually begin to experience life like that. And then, and then maybe if you want to, you can get married, right? 
That is the mindset of the world. But until we go to the Bible, that tells us that, yes, a man will be uni united with his wife in marriage, and they will become one flesh. You know, we have to understand that that's what God wants for all of us. So I know we can talk about another time about marriage if you want to focus on that. I know there are many scriptures. I know because of time, I know we're getting there. I'm not going to get into it, but we can do a lot of things. I want to just answer Jasmine's uh, question. She says, how do we help friends and family again uh, misled into Catholicism, idolatry, uh, to marry, etc.? That's a very good question. Uh, Jasmine, you know, the one, the one thing I wanted to tell you is that the first thing you have to establish is for them to be convinced and to agreement that the Word of God is truly the Word of God. In other words, that what their Bible says is actually true, okay? Once you establish that, you can also then point them out to scriptures that say that any type of idolatry, any type of worship to any type of image, you know, uh, or any anyone is really idolatry. That is one thing that you can begin to tell them, look, look what the Bible says. The Bible says, your Bible says this. You know, because a lot of people, when they read this, they say, wait a minute, so so why are they telling us to worship, you know, these these people or these things or to put a trust on these things? The second thing is, to need them to read what the Bible says about Mary. That Mary, yes, was the mother of Jesus Christ, but yet that also, mother, you know, that Mary also had other children. And the way to know this is because there are scriptures in the, the reference that Jesus had brothers and even a sister, if I'm not mistaken. So she did not stay a virgin all her life. Yes, she was a wonderful woman. She was a vessel that God chose. You know what? She accepted that, that uh, I guess, um, uh, invitation or, 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 I guess, blessing from God. But yet, you know what? God used her to bring Jesus Christ. And just because she's the mother of Jesus or the mother of God does not make her more. In fact, the Bible never tells us to worship the mother of God. It tells us to worship Jesus or God the Father or the Holy Spirit. So anyway, I, I, I hope that that helps. Uh, I mean, you should can tell you that a lot of prayer is needed, uh, Jasmine, to pray for their eyes to be open. I would fast for your family or your friends so that when you speak to them, you know, and you're ready to, you know, bring maybe certain points or certain issues uh, that they will be willing to at least listen. But the main thing is for them to read them for themselves in their own Bibles that, there's, you know, there are many things that they believe that are wrong. Okay. Um... Let me see here. Um, uh, let me see who else. Uh, uh, the second commandment. Yeah. Oh, Pastor, can I just say something? I just want yes. to go ahead. Sir. Very, very briefly. I just want to say there was some. There was, you know, during the time when I was church hunting, job hunting, you name it. I came across so many interesting churches. Amongst that was one where uh, this lady was having a yoga session and she was calling everyone, you know, to come forward. Then I had to, I just went straight up to the pastor and I told him, I said, listen, there is no way that you can have yoga in this church. And I mean, I just came fresh out from the Middle East. I didn't know nothing about, you know, mixed up churches and new age and Christianity. I didn't know these things because I went to a real straight laced straight faced uh, holy spirit filled you know it they, they're so deep in the word so for me it was like <laughs> blah culture shock you know what i mean and then uh, you know i went and i had a talk with the pastor and then she you know had a whole load of tears and i would never do anything i love jesus and that you know and i mentioned the dangers of yoga i mean it's it's pure danger that's that's what i just know I mean, I didn't know any further because I did have encounters and God, you know, made me repent about the things that I you know, went through as a child. Uh, again, there was another church, but this was a little more interesting. This was in Mississauga. Emmanuel dropped me both times. And when I went to the church the first time, I, I was a little more than perturbed because I really experienced speaking in tongues to be a very peaceful, very quiet. And many times when I speak in the spirit, it's such a wonderful, calming experience, you know, the distractions or whatever that when we pray in the spirit, he really calms us down. And then, you know, the language flows and, you know, that peace of God, and you can feel a lot of things. But this was very funny, because a pastor who had come forward to pray, I mean, to preach in church, next to him or close by him i'm not really sure but i didn't really look in that direction all i know was that there was this lady who was talking in tongues and she was uh 
unnecessarily, unbelievably loud. And she's speaking in tongues, but it very much disturbed me. Uh, I came home and I kept thinking about the volume and the decibel was, I mean, she was screaming her head off, which I thought was unusual because I've never come across anyone like that. And the, 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 all the women who were in church had their shoulders slumped. They were all dressed in drab colors. It was like as if it was there was slavery in that church. That's the feeling I got. I don't know how to explain. Only thing I know that all the women looked like they were guilty of being women. I've never, I'm, to me, that was totally new. So I went once, I went twice after that. I said, and the service was going on and on. The preacher was going on and on. The, the worship was going on and on. It was so tiresome. It was like there was no enjoyment. So was I right in leaving that place? I mean, I left, I never went back, but I'm just, just wondering now. Is yes, this I, I, I agree with you. This see, we, we can't have, we cannot have a mixture of things. When you see that there's a mixture of evil and good or different spirits, then that is an indication that something is not right, you know? And especially knowing the truth, when you understand and know it, then you cannot have that mixture because you know what? It's, it's like me, for example. If, if I get together, for example, with other religions and I begin to pray to God with someone who's a Buddhist, okay, or maybe another type of religion, we're not in the same spirit. We're not in the same mindset anymore. So therefore, we're not praying to the same God. It's like me, for example, getting together with someone that is Catholic, and they're praying to Mary, and I'm praying to God the Father. It makes no sense. We're no longer in the same spirit. We're no longer, you know, in agreement anymore. So therefore, that's what the devil uses to get in and to begin to manifest and begin to deviate or interfere. And that's usually how the spirit of Jezebel will operate too. They will infiltrate themselves very slightly and slowly, Maybe someone having a gift of divination, for example, and they begin to push a certain thing or a certain type of a message or a certain type of revelation. And before you know it, this person becomes uh, the focus, the center focus of the church. And because no one questions them or they just don't know, all of a sudden they begin to take control by giving false prophetic words. And before you know it, the whole church is being led by this person, this man or this woman that is not necessarily even part of the leadership or not even the pastors. So, and that's how all this stuff begins to take place. They open up to, again, to uh, false uh, teachings, to, uh, in this case, doctrines, or in the case of, like you mentioned, yoga, or other types of things that came into the church. So when you see those things, believe me, that is an indication that that is not the church for you. That is not a good church because you have to be biblical. You have to be in agreement, you know, with what the Word of God says, and you cannot have mixtures of things like that. Amen? Anybody else? Uh, I know that we've uh, almost run out of time, but um, um, uh, let me see. Um, uh, to, so to answer your question here, uh, I think it was, um, let me see who else. Um, uh, Raven, I think, what, what scripture has to do with uh, living with your boyfriend or girlfriend? Well, you know, any, any type of uh, intimacy, again, outside of marriage is fornication, really, right? So fornication is something that strictly the Bible tells us not to partake in. And that's why when the Bible tells us, look, let every man has his own wife and let every woman has his husband so that, you know, we will not uh, fall into temptation or sin. So that's why if you're going to, you know, burn out of lust, then you might as well get married. Amen. Anybody else? I have a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, so... When I first came to Christ, I feel like I went straight into the hyper charismatic and the a little bit of the prosperity stuff just for a quick second before I started having dreams about it. But, you know, coming from the new age, I really wanted to feel, you know, something and I really wanted to have these experiences. And I can see that, there, that there's a setup, you know, in that way. And I ended up watching this documentary about how the Kundalini spirit was, you know, infiltrating the churches and how it looked so similar. Like when these, you know, certain um, very, how do you say, popular pastors would pour out this anointing, the way that it would manifest on the people, whether it be them moving kind of like a snake in the floor or 
you know, um, g- moving, gyrating, moving their head back and forth. It would look like the Kundalini and they would show like comparisons. And so I kind of just wanted to ask about that because, you know, I, I think that a lot of churches don't see that because I, I mean, of course there's, there's true gifts, right? There's this truth that there really is spiritual movement of God. There really is healings. There really is the speaking in tongues. There are miracles, but there's definitely a counterfeit. There's definitely this copycat movement in the church. And so, you know, places like, I mean, I guess I don't want to say names, but you know, more like the Bethels and stuff that are doing all these miracles. It just gets so hard to discern, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's very true, uh, Taylor. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll give you my, my opinion on all this. You know, I can buy the fruits, you shall know them, right? And uh, I have seen, you know, and I've met a lot of people that come out of the, the, the Bethel, you know, School of Ministry, and uh, they've gone to the church and stuff, and I can see in most of them, not all of them, but in most of them, you know, the fruit is not good. And two is they always have the same type of manifestation where they they either shake the way that you're, you're saying or they have this like almost like a hiccup that just comes over them and they all have the same type of manifestation. Now, when you begin to look at the history of Bethel, the history of what they've done, the history of their leaders and what they believe, you begin to see that there's some things that really don't quite add up, you know. Among those things, you will see that, you know, they believe in transferring of anointings and what they do is sometimes and you can find this on the web too you can learn it and read it for yourself they believe that you know what they can go to maybe a, a deceased uh, man of god for example someone that was very anointing a man of god you know that was used maybe for revival and lay down on the tombs for example and pray that the, the anointing that is on these bones or whatever that may still be in the coffin or whatever that that, that anointing may still be passed on to them let me tell you that is not not biblical and the reason why i say this is because yes in the bible there is a story where elijah when elijah died he was you know being carried sorry he was uh, being buried and yet these men were coming with uh, another man that were going to bury him and and then the, the when they, they dropped him he he actually ended up touching some of the bones from Elijah and he came to life. But that was how much anointing was on Elijah. They were not seeking for that anointing. So they believe that if they lay down on the these tombs, again, so you see them going to cemeteries, laying down on the tombs of these men of God, hoping and praying and asking for the anointing that is on these, again, these, these men to come onto them. But let me tell you, that is not that is not good. That is a practice that is done even in witchcraft too. So again, that is my opinion. I have seen things that, you know, I, I do not believe they're they're from God. I do believe there's an infiltration of a false Holy Spirit. I do believe, and this is many churches too, I do believe that, you know, there is a spirit operating there that is deceiving people and to just focus on the signs and the wonders and not to focus really on a transformation of life, right? Again, I can go and talk a lot about that too for a whole hour if you want me to, but... Uh, I, I have I have my reasons to like I said to not um, um, accept I guess or not to uh, give in into the whole um, I guess glamour if you want to call it or the whole um, um, I guess attraction of going through the signs and the wonders because I, the fruit that I've seen in people and, and the things that they're doing that they practice many of these things are not actually from the Lord that's just my opinion. Uh, James says, uh, if 95% of the church is bowing down to the B system, uh, COVID agenda, all double vax masks, but still bear good fruits, should that uh, ring alarm bells? That's a good question. Sorry, before I answer that question, anybody, I saw that someone wanted to say something. Go ahead, please. Oh, I was going to say on just like exposing the false ministries, like a lot of people um, are not sure if they should still listen to the music that's created by like Hillsong and the Bethel because like, they're like oh like we're singing about God but like the creators though like what do you have to say on that mm-hmm. that's a good question you know what I, I, I honestly uh, I, I believe that we have to always look at the source and, and what type of spirit operates from a church you know and I can understand that you know sometimes you know right now if you think about it you know the Bethel you know has taking control of the 
the worship uh, scene in some ways. You know, most churches are singing, you know, all of their songs. Same thing with Hillsong. That's what they were doing back then. And uh, we have to ask the Lord. I, I believe that, you know, if we're singing the word of God, that's one thing. But if we're just singing songs that may not be biblical, you know, maybe just simply prayers or maybe just a nice song. Those songs make me question a lot of things. But when it's the word of God, is you're singing the word of God. But I would always put in question, okay, what is the spirit operating behind the music? What is the spirit operating behind the church, the ministry? Because that also gets transferred. If you understand how the music industry works and how the devil operates through all these artists, you know, there's always a transfer of a, a type of a spirit, whether it's, uh, you know, demons coming in and, and cursing and following again all these uh, CDs and copies that get made, or even, you know, trying to understand why is it that all of a sudden, you know, these bands are being so influential. And then not to say that they're not good, of course, they have great music, but I always question when something becomes too popular, Lord, is this really you? Or is it the devil trying to deceive people very slowly away from the truth? So I can tell you personally, me, I'm not a big fan for those reasons because I do believe there is there is some sort of type of mixing of, of uh, truths and a false Holy Spirit, all this. And again, we have to even look at the lives of the singers, you know, who they are. And sometimes that is difficult to know just simply by watching a video. But when you begin to do some research, you begin to realize in what they say, what they preach, that may not be necessarily aligned with God's word. Amen. Uh, to answer James' uh, question, let me see. Um, I'm sorry, I just uh, I think I lost. Um, okay, so if 95% of the church is bowing down to the B system, uh, COVID agenda, all double vax masks, but still bear good fruits, should that ring alarm bells? Okay. Now, this is a very uh, uh, interesting question, uh, James. I think we can spend a, a whole uh, a night talking about it. I do believe, you know, like I said, uh, this whole uh, COVID vaccine, it is the B system being deployed. It is not the mark of the beast yet, but I do believe there's a lot of deception there and that, you know, a lot of Christians, like I said, they're not seeing the signs, they're not seeing or, or hearing uh, necessarily what God wants to do or where all of this is leading. Again, I'm not condemning anybody that's been vaxxed or not. I mean, I, I do believe everyone has a choice to do what they want to do with, with their bodies, but I do believe that most of the church right now is not paying attention. And because of that reason, many are being deceived and they're being pushed into the system that eventually can come back and bite them in what sense and manipulating and controlling them if they do not take a stand and begin to do as the Lord begins to show them and guide them to do okay um let me see what else guys i know there's a lot of things um um yes uh money is a big factor you know sometimes churches unfortunately they have become very blessed you know and that's how uh you know even the bible talks about the seven churches in the book of revelations but some churches you know were completely blessed but they they simply parted in their ways. They were no longer, you know, uh, doing the things that God wanted them to do and so forth. You can read that in, you know, Revelations chapter 1, 2, and 3. You can read about the churches and see where different churches fall. And also you can identify maybe yourself with a specific church. So maybe to see if you, maybe you've lost your first love or maybe you have gone after, you know, vain things. Or maybe you've allowed the seduction from the Holy Spirit to... To, uh, you know, sorry, the seduction from the devil and Jezebel to come in and infiltrate and seduce you into adopting this mindset that, you know what, it's okay to live morally or, or I guess, sexually immorally in the church. And it's not right. It's not correct. Amen? So please look into that as well. That is a great, great uh, teaching. You know, I mean, you can read it for yourself. It's not too hard to understand it. Just read it and you'll be able to find many answers. Amen? So, again, uh, I know there's so many things uh, here. Um, I'll just close with this. You know, I, I, I want to tell you this because at the end of the day, this is what matters. You know, I do believe that God, yes, God wants us to do things with excellence. In other words, give your best. Give your best to God. But that does not mean that someone that sings better has more anointing than somebody else. And I'll tell you my experience with all this, and I have a whole teaching on this I can I can send you guys to. And this is more about prophetic worship or what has to do how to worship God in spirit and truth. 
And that had to do that I had an opportunity to go to Guatemala at one point. And I, I got into this church, very small church made out of, you know, almost uh, cardboard, almost, you know, wood and cardboard. The, the benches were just pieces of wood over blocks. And I was there sitting, you know, and listening to the, the worship. And the worship was just two people. It was a, a guy on a guitar, you know, that was missing a string, out of tune, singing. And the drummer was a six-year-old playing drums just on a snare, you know, just bah, bah. They were off time, off beat, you know, uh, off tune. And I'm thinking, man, this is horrible. You know, what am I doing here? You know, this is me being critical. You know, many of you know that I'm a musician, so I, 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 I used to be very critical of these type of things. But then God spoke to me right there and then said to me, look around, look behind you. And I, and I turned around, and what did I see? I saw the Holy Spirit moving with power. I saw people falling on their knees, being convicted of their sin. I saw people receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. I saw people being transformed, being healed, being set free in the midst of this worship that to my ears sounded horrible. So God was showing me that, you know what, that it doesn't matter how good or bad the music is. What matters is that people worship Him in spirit and truth. And then what happens? I get to Canada, and what do I see? I see, you know, the, the biggest churches, the best musicians, the best lighting system, the best projection systems, the best everything. And I look at the people, and people are, you know, distracted, looking at their phones, you know, bored, hoping, man, this is taking too long. Why are we singing this song again? You know, all this stuff. And yet the Holy Spirit not moving maybe the way that He wants to move. Right? So these type of things make you think now, make you question now. Say, wait a minute, so what, what is this thing all about? It comes down to the heart, like I said to you in the very first uh, night that we got together. It comes down to the heart, you know. Where is my heart at, you know? If I'm blessed with the gift, even better. I can use my gift to praise God. But I can still worship God. God can still move in my midst, even if I can't sing at all. So that is how God works. And God does what God does. Amen? So... He will always, always, always look at your heart to see if there's pride, if there's what are the real intentions of why you do certain things. And you know what? We have to make sure that even in our hearts, we're genuine with God and we are able to transform it. Amen? So, uh, let me see. I know there's a lot of things here. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, God loves our natural voices. Yes. Remember, let me tell you this. Talent does not impress God. I want to tell you that right now. Your talent will never impress God. And you know why? Because He's the one that gave it to you in the first place. So He knows what you're capable of doing. He knows how he, how well you can sing or play the drums or whatever. What impresses God is your heart. A humble heart. You know, a heart that is willing to learn. Especially if you are under so much um, maybe pressure or uh, maybe your heart is contrited. You know, you still come to God and you still decide to lift up your hands and to praise Him and to worship Him. And let me tell you, God will move. God will touch you. God will transform you. Amen. God bless you again. 10.05. I know we've gone a little bit over. But um, I don't know. I'm not sure if anyone in the legs would like to say something before we close. Or Taylor, maybe you want to say something before we close. I mean, I know that I'm talking. Uh, I'm trying to pick topics, like I said, as the Holy Spirit leads me. That will help all of you have discernment and begin to identify uh, and compare maybe how your life was before coming to Christ and now what it can be in Christ and having that discernment. Amen? Um, let me see. Um, Alina, if you're there still, how do you feel? If you're maybe mute your microphone or just type it in. Uh, if not, I mean, Father, we pray that you may finish and you always finish when you begin. Father, let that uh, deliverance take place in her body. Same thing with James. Whatever's taking place, Father, remove it. Lena, go ahead, please. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I feel a little off. <laughs> um, anxious and my stomach and it hurts and my feet are really burning. Okay. So that means that the devil, okay? The devil... I feel has... a little bit scared, too. Okay, so the devil has reacted. In other words, now starting to feel uncomfortable because you're beginning to believe, Okay. So that means the deliverance is not complete. It's still the devil is trying to cling on there. Okay. So I'm going to pray so that God gives you strength and that he removes all these things. But again, do not be surprised if later on maybe you go and you vomit or, you know, you, uh, you know. Yeah, I feel like I'm a little bit there, okay. <laughs> nauseated. 
if you feel you're going to vomit, let it come out, okay? Because that is going to be a manifestation of that deliverance. So just go to the washroom and, and let it come out, okay? Again, it may, it may come out in different ways, maybe through yawns as well. Uh, uh, you know, but again, the main thing is to understand that right now you're in this process and God's not going to leave you hanging, okay? So let me just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray for Alina. Father, we command every spirit of fear, and every spirit that has brought this anxiety over her life. And Father, every type of nauseous, every type of uh, symptom or, or uh, manifestation of these demons, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we just cast them out completely. Father, we break every chain. We break every wall, oh God. And devil, we command you, let go of Alina right now. And you're going to come out and come out in silence in the name of Jesus. I command you, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. Out of the stomach, out of the stomach, out of the stomach, and out of the mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray and we cry out to God for your power to manifest it, the blood of Jesus to come, to God, and cleanse and burn every demon. And devil, we command you, let go of the legs, let go of the stomach, uh, the ancient, again, serpent, let go. Come out in Jesus' name. So, Father, we pray, Lord God, for that strength. We pray for that peace. And we pray, Lord God, that you may finish what you have begun today in her life. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you all the praise and all the, the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, Lena. Listen, if you want to talk with me again during the week, by all means, feel free to send me a message. But I know you're going to still feel like this for the next few uh, minutes. And just cry out to God and say, Lord, set me free, set me free, set me free, set me free. And whatever you feel, just say, Lord, I remove it from me. I cast it out in the name of Jesus. And just pray that way. Say, Lord, I don't want sin in my life. I renounce all these things. And just say it, say it yourself. And as you say it, you're going to feel that this thing begins to lose its grip even more in your life. You're going to be set completely free, okay? Thank you. God bless you, Alina. Amen. So God bless everyone again. So just a reminder, next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, we're going to have our deliverance and healing and breakthrough night, okay? So the message is going to be oriented towards that way. We're going to be praying again for everybody. And I want you all to open up your cameras. I want to see your faces. I want to see what takes place, what, who is manifesting so that we can pray right there and then and release, you know, God's power so that he can begin to break those chains and begin to do that. Amen. So I want you to begin to pray for the Lord. Set us free. And don't just pray for yourself. Look, set us all free. You know, pour out your spirit in all of us. Give us your, your you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Look, God, transform our lives. Break the chains in all of us so that we can all go through that transformation. Amen. God bless you all. Again, Taylor, not sure if you want to say the last words before we close. Or I'll ask you to pray, Taylor, if you're there, if you don't mind. I'm not sure if you can um, hear me today right now, but anyway. Let oh, me... I'm sorry. I thought I was unmuted. <laughs> I wasn't. I was just talking away to myself. Go ahead. Okay, Taylor. sure. All right. Father God, we come to you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. God, we just thank you for this day. God, we just ask you to just wash our minds in the precious blood of Jesus to just totally help us to renew our mind, Lord, as we just submit to you, help us to just submit our flesh to you, to just walk with you, Lord, in the spirit and in truth, Lord. Lord, I ask you to remove any strongholds or any hindrances that are keeping us from being in your word, God, any, any spirits that are keeping us from being able to receive your word deep into our hearts. God, I ask that you just write your word on our hearts, Lord, so that we may be transformed and walk in your glory. God, I know that you have called us to be a part of your end times army, to be a part of your kingdom, Lord. Let us walk in your kingdom intelligence, God, so that we may glorify you, so that we may share your name with the world, a world that needs you so desperately, Lord. And we just thank you so much for bringing us together, for bringing us this pastor, Lord, that, that is just able to feed us on such a deep level, God. We know that you did that, that only you could do that. Only you could give us this space, God, to just really be fed and nourished in our soul, God. And we just thank you so much for all that you're doing, God, all the ways that you've already shown yourself to us, God, in dreams or just in, in confirmations of your words that you've spoken over us, Lord, we just thank you so much. We just exalt you over 
over this nation. I know that we're in different countries. God, we just put you over our homes so that you are just You are just radiating wherever we go that people can just see your presence in our hearts and in our words, God. God, let us just amplify you everywhere we go so that we just may touch people in your name, Father. And I just thank you. And I just thank you for this deliverance that's coming up next Sunday, Lord. May we just be totally set free. God, in your word, it says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Lord. We are calling you. We just love you. We just want more of you, Lord. We want to be totally set free, God. And we just thank you for it. God, we just thank you for what you're already going to do. God, we thank you for the strength to get through any any fasting times. God, anything that we need to do or let go of during this week, God, I ask you to just make it known to us so that we can just be totally absorbed in your word, God. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Taylor. Well, God bless everyone again. Welcome to the, again, to I Go International Gospel Outreach. And I want to encourage you, you know what? Uh, share the links, tell someone about uh, next week. But I know that you that have started this fast, you will experience the greatest, you know what, uh, breakthrough as well in your life. And uh, that is that is what's happening. Sorry, guys, my son is just blocking the camera here. Can you stand up there, Bobby? <laughs> anyway, so God bless everyone. James, again, God bless you. I know, and I, I, I apologize for maybe holding back some of you guys. I know many of you guys have been asking me, can you pray for deliverance? And I said, just wait, 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 because God's going to do something tremendous. And I'll tell you, after the deliverance, we're going to focus a lot on discipleship, discipling you, building foundations in you, building, you know what, those identities in you, you know, so that you can one day be the one praying for deliverance for those around you. Amen. God bless everyone. Again, have a wonderful night. All the best again, everyone. James, God bless all of you guys. And may the Lord continue to do transformation. Tiffany, God bless all of you guys. Again, and good to see all of you here. Please send my regards to Daniel and all of you. Amen. God bless you. And until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.